Hello, uh, I'm Kat and welcome to my channel and welcome to this first video in a series where I talk about the work I'm doing to rationalise and refactor my wardrobe. So before we get stuck into the first part of this process, I'm just going to do a quick talk on why I want to do this. Um, so yeah, the thing is, I don't like to get rid of clothes. I think the only exit route available to the poor, overworked clothes in my closet is to get ripped or stained beyond repair. Um, because I will wear ripped clothes, I will wear stained clothes, I will eventually repair the ripped clothes, um, and then continue to wear them until they rip again. Um, yeah, if it, if it fits me, and I'm happy with it, I will wear it to death. And if it doesn't fit me, well, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna keep them for that mythical day when I um, suddenly magically shrink back to the size I was when I was 24. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that just means I have 20 odd years worth of clothes um, in my wardrobe. Um, that's not 20 odd years on top of being 24. There are, there are things in there from when I was a teenager um, <laughs> that still fit or that don't fit and are being kept for nostalgia purposes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, so there's a lot in there that I don't wear. I would say that before the pandemic I was wearing maybe 50% of my wardrobe um, on a regular basis and during the pandemic that dropped to 20% because when you're isolated in your home it's very easy for your lounging around work uh, wardrobe to become your work wardrobe to become your faffing in the garden wardrobe to become your you know uh, going out for walks wardrobe it you know it's very easy just for the same thing to do for all ends and also very easy to just graze for new outfits on the top of the clean laundry that hasn't been put away pile. So for the past two and a half years I feel like I've had a uniform which has effectively been some form of cut-off trouser, some form of t-shirt and if I'm feeling somewhat nippy a hoodie and generally you know the hoodies are black, the t-shirts are some dark or neutral colour that I've gotten free from work generally and the, and the cutoffs are some very bright colour. <laughs> so yeah, I, it, it was time to re-familiarise myself with uh, the rest of my wardrobe and all of those clothes which hadn't had a look in for those two years because they, you know, they never made it out, so they never made it to the laundry pile, so they never made it to being worn. It was a bit of a vicious cycle. So the first step in this quest for a more rational wardrobe is the declutter step. And I love this step. I love going through things, making decisions on keep or not, and then, you know, tidying them up, putting them back, reorganising them when, when they get there. And this seems a bit at odds to my initial statement at the start of the video where I say I don't get rid of clothes. For some reason, I think clothes are the, the exception to this, or they have been um, in recent years. Um, I think perhaps because I let get less joy from clothes and it would be interesting to see if following this process to give myself a rational wardrobe that I wear 90% of on the regular uh, actually brings me more joy and pride in dressing <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know cover you know in, in what to me is is often just about covering my body maybe it will become a little bit more about feeling good in my body and expressing myself. I mean, I've, I've, got, I've got high hopes for this process, so we'll, we'll have to see how it goes. So I've got a five step process for this declutter. And step one is get everything out, all of my clothes out of all the places they are and put them in a big pile. Uh, okay, so caveat, when I say all, I don't actually mean all. I, think I, I left socks, pants, bras and nightwear um, where they were because I feel like 
that's a that's a separate thing. Those can those are already categorized and can be sorted as their own category. I also left random accessories where they were, and also you know jewelry and stuff to also be processed separately as smaller tasks. This is just about outerwear clothing that I would happily leave the house in. So the advantage of this like throw it all in a pile approach is that you just end up with like this real visceral feel of wow that is how much I, I've got and it might surprise you. It's It surprised me um, when I pulled all this stuff together because the way my uh, uh, wardrobe uh, dressing room is organized you know I, there's a bunch of different wardrobe spaces and I've sort of and drawers as well and I've sort of spread over all of them and kind of it's easy to, to think of it as small chunks but when it's all together it's actually a very large whole. Okay so the next step, my favourite step, is the sorting and categorising step. This is supposed to be just a very quick, very quick decision making, almost instinctive process. Um, and in order to, to make it so instinctive and um, fast and reduce sort of the decision load on your brain at each garment level, it's really important, I think, to get a good set of categories set up at the beginning of the process. So the, so the categories will, I think, be individual to you and your usage of your wardrobe. So, um, but I'll go through my categories and explain how I came to them. So the categories that I went with were no, this, you know, this, this garment is out of here. No reprieve. <laughs> um, maybe the which is kind of like the softened no pile. I think I gave myself a maybe pile to throw stuff in that I knew I, I knew in my heart was a no, but I had maybe some emotional resistance to to just dismissing it to the no pile immediately and outright. Uh, the next pile, uh, the next category, sorry, I specified was my activities pile and this was kind of, is kind of a catch-all category but I consider activities to be this is something I do that requires specific dress so uh, some of the activities in my activities pile were scruffy clothes for gardening and DIY um, exercise clothes of which there were two subcategories running and yoga ing you know indoor low impact stuff yoga ing i guess uh then i have a formal section so this is for for pieces that i'm going to wear to a wedding a christening something of that nature i feel like most of my friends have gone through the weddings and christenings um phase of life but that being said we do have a wedding next year and i do have a dress that i've retained that i can wear to it um, so yeah, but I feel like that comes set. That is, it, it's it's an activity, but I feel like it it's a separate activity to the more everyday activities. So that deserves its own category. Uh, the next category I defined for myself was sentimental, and these are things that I know I'm never gonna wear again. Either they don't fit me, or they're totally out of my style. But I'm not gonna throw them away because there's a, a serious emotional tie to them. Now I think Marie Kondo says that for things like that you take a picture of it and you treasure the picture, but I think I'll just keep keep the item. Um, I have some of those vacuum seal bags that I can throw things in and then yeah I can just seal them up, pop them in the box room, um, out of sight, out of mind, but not out of heart. <laughs> Yeah, I just can't bear to get rid of them. So I gave myself an allowance for that. I gave myself a separate pile for things to which I'm emotionally attached. Some of these are because they have memories attached, you know, so, uh, yeah, such as, you know, a, a skirt I bought when I went to New Zealand uh, when I, alone when I was younger, uh, or sort of my wedding dress. Um, 
and others are, are sentimental attachments because I made them. I made that dress. Like that is a record of a creative moment in my life. I guess my wedding dress also comes into that category. Um, but there's a whole load of skirts that, and tops that I made and dresses that, that no longer fit, but I, I love them so very much. Um, so they get they get a pass on sentimental um, terms. So actually those, yeah, those three keep categories that I've listed so far, activities formal and sentimental, are probably 15% of the wardrobe I intend to keep. And the main bulk of it is, is going to be made up by the stuff in these next two categories. And once again, these are just the categories that made sense for me based on what I feel I already have in my wardrobe and know that I already wear. So at the top of this video, I mentioned that uh, for most of the pandemic, I've just been wearing outfits which are sort of bright coloured cutoffs, neutral t-shirts that I got for free and hoodies and that sort of thing. And I like that. I'm comfortable in that. It's it's a look I like. It's, it's you know, I keep replenishing it. Um, I keep getting free t-shirts from work. <laughs> uh, so... I'm not going to abandon that just for some aspiration of the cat I want to be. I, you know, I've got to accept the cat that I am. So I do want a capsule wardrobe, that mythical beast, but I think for me it's going to end up being two capsules. So I made a category called my bright capsule, which is anything that sort of fits into that. It's stuff that I'm going to wear at the weekend. It's stuff that I'm going to wear, you know, on the sofa in the evening. Um, it's, yeah, it, it's uh, a capsule that has it, it's um, neutral dark is black and then all of the other bright high saturation colours uh, fit in there because I'm, I, I consider that all colours of, of that sort of brightness kind of match, you know, it doesn't matter what the hue is. They've all got the same sort of value and saturation, so uh, that I think they sit well together on me. Like, colour matching I don't think is an exact science, colour matching is a personal preference situation. So whatever your rules are, they're good rules, they're, they are the rules. Um, <laughs> right, so that's, that's my bright capsule, and the purpose of that is stuff that I'm gonna scruff around and feel comfortable in most of its you know, jersey or got an elasticated waistband, you know, that level of thing. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so then my second capsule, uh, which is, I'm going to sort of call my work capsule, is based on the fact that I buy a lot of stuff in sort of this, this kind of teal or in a burnt orange. Those seem to be colours that I gravitate to in smarter outfits. Um, and even before I piled everything in a heap and looked at it, I, I knew I had a lot of that in the wardrobe. So I'm going to call that my work capsule because it's stuff that I'm going to wear to go to work. And I need that now because my office has called us back in starting in the 1st of October. We're expected to do more days in the office than at home, I think is, is the general expectation. Um, and also it's it's going to be stuff that I wear when I go out to socialise and, and visit with friends and I want to be a little smarter. Um, yeah, and and that's happening more now as well. It's 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 a whole new world or a return to the old world. So um, I was once told that the way to build a capsule wardrobe um, is thus. Uh, first you pick your neutrals and generally you get sort of white and denim for free in neutrals um, and then you want to sort of decide whether you want to do for sort of your mid-tones and your darks whether you want to do sort of warm or cool so I so sort of warm would be you know tans taupes browns yeah warm and warmer neutrals um, so, but I'm, I don't think that suits me, so I want to head for cools. So in the cools section, you sort of choose whether you want your um, 
dark neutral to be black or navy. Now I own a lot of black, but I feel like for me black is a bright, it's very absolute. So I feel like a lot of my black is going to be sitting with my brights capsule. And I think black is just a bit too strong to sort of go with these nice sort of muted greens and oranges that I've got going. So I've chosen as the dark for my work capsule, I've chosen navy. And then, you know, the cool mid-tone um, neutral would be grey. Right, so after you've picked your neutrals, uh, you then pick two accent colours for your capsule. And those should be colours that, that go nicely together. But as I said before, what goes nice together, matching, that is a personal feeling, a personal choice about what you feel good in. If you say they go together for you, they go together and everybody else can just shut the front door. Um, and uh, yeah, so for me, as I said, I picked um, sort of the tealy green and uh, sort of more burnt, uh, burnt orange, more, a more neutral orange than the orange you see here, because these are, these are colours that I love, my favourite colours, and I think that they all work well together. So yeah, so that's that category. Work capsule, anything vaguely smart or, or entirely not scruffy, um, in navy, grey, white, teal or burnt orange. Okay, that's, that's the hard part of the sort. Trust me, thinking of the categories is the hard part of the sorting. The next, the next bit is just to tear through that pile and throw things into the various categories. Um, it shouldn't take you more than, you know, it should ideally take you about one second of deliberation per garment probably not more than five seconds. Just go through, just just turn your brain off, follow your gut, you got this. Okay, step three. And actually I feel like steps three, four and five you can sort of mix and merge together on a, perhaps on a category by category basis if, if that works for you. Um, we shall see. Well anyway, step, step three is try everything on and as part of that process you'll probably do a bit more of step four which is step four is yet more sorting um so i'm gonna spare you time lapse video of me trying stuff on nobody wants to see that um but yeah the basic thing is like does it fit does it look good on me do i feel good in, in this and as a result of doing step three trying stuff on you end up doing a little bit more step four, which is sort again. So you've tried something on, the result of that is either it stays in the category pile, um, it goes on the maybe pile, or it goes to the no pile. Um, so why would something that doesn't fit you or doesn't look good on you go into the maybe pile? So for me, I think it's because I know I could I could do something to turn that maybe into a yes with that particular article. Um, so, for example, I found out that I apparently have 10 pairs of jeans that I've just been picking up and picking up and then they sort of move backwards as new ones come into the front. And it was quite interesting to note that out of these 10 pairs of jeans, Two of them fit me really well, and naturally those are the ones that I rotate in and out via the laundry pile. Two of them fit me kind of okay, but they have um, tears in them, usually where I heft them up by the belt loop and then the belt loop rips out. Go figure. Um, but, but they still fit and they can be fixed and something can happen with them. And then, yes, the remaining six pairs, they don't fit. They're too small. But it's a lot of denim. It's a lot of denim. And um, reading up on capsule wardrobes uh, in the internet, the, the source of all wisdom, um, a fair few folks say that actually a denim jacket is a staple for a capsule wardrobe. And I do, I do not have a denim jacket. I do have a lot of denim. So yeah, though, so those two um, jeans that kind of fit me, are going to get mended and turned into something else, um, probably cut off jeans or flares respectively. 
and the six pairs that don't fit me are going to get re-dyed and then t I'm going to scavenge the denim and turn them into a jacket. So, so that would be a, re a reason for keeping an item that doesn't fit you. You know you could either make it fit you or you could scavenge the fabric for something else, but it's going to return in one form or another to the fold at some point. Um, yeah, so because I did the trying on category by category, it also, as I tried something on and guessed it, gave me the ability to sort of fold it up neatly and put it on the bed and then sort of organise and see what that category looks like as a whole in, a, in an organised way, not in a giant heap of clothes way. And I guess that brings me along to talking about step five. Step five is organise. Okay, you've got your your capsule pile or your category pile of clothes or neatly folded array of clothes that you've tried on and they all fit you. And then the next thing to do is to organise them and organise them back into your wardrobe. So having taken the trouble to define these categories, it's probably worth looking at your available wardrobe space and deciding which categories get assigned to which area of the wardrobe. I'm quite lucky, as I said earlier, my wardrobe is very sectioned up. I've got sort of a, a yay high wardrobe, large wardrobe space where most of my ignored clothes were. Um, I've got a very tall wardrobe space that I share with my husband's nostalgia matrix coat, um, where I had a lot of my formal wear. Um, I've got four, four drawers and a couple of shelves as well. So it was quite easy to decide that my capsule wardrobe, my work capsule is going back in the ward, the low, low level wardrobe of ignored clothes, hopefully to be ignored no longer, that my formal clothes are going back in the tall wardrobe because they're mostly tall, uh, that my, I could give a, a full drawer to my activities wear and organise it by uh, category there and in fact the scruffy clothes categories went on a, a shelf um, and my brights one my brights capsule was full of stuff that is actually quite lightweight and very compactable so I was able to get all of that in one drawer as well with a few of the extra bigger pieces needing to hang but they could go in the same tall wardrobe as the formal wear because there was extra space in there so it actually worked out really well that having defined these categories i had spaces enough to um organize them back into my wardrobe in, in situ in the categories that they're in um but having having emptied my wardrobe i actually took the opportunity to be a bit more organised, <laughs> you know, a bit more structured about how I organised things within those drawers as well. So I went on the internet and got an awful lot of, uh, of these sort of fabric, reinforced sort of fabric or plastic drawer dividers or wardrobe dividers, which enabled me to have a place, a very specific place for everything and make it so that I can see everything all at once rather than half my clothes needing some sort of ex archaeological excavation to get to them. And yes, the minute they were under the top layer, they were out of sight, out of mind. So now everything is top layer. My husband calls this first order retrievability, which I think is a phrase he got from Adam Savage. So if it's, if it's good for the maker workshop, it's good for, for this girl's wardrobe. And there we go. That was that was the process. It took me the best part of the day to do all my clothes and all of the steps for all of my clothes. And then, as I said, the other things that I left out, uh, like underwear, accessories, um, nightwear and stuff, I processed um, as a sort of mini versions of that sort. Um, in the mornings before I before I got up for work um, while my husband was still sleeping and that took like 10 or 20 minutes 
uh, per category. But yeah, they didn't need to go into big sort because they were already categorized effectively. So having gone through this process, I feel like actually by volume, 50% of the clothes in my wardrobe ended up in either the no pile or the maybe pile. And I'm going to use my next video to talk about how to divest of all those clothes that were in the no pile. Uh, and then the maybe pile, the stuff I was talking about refactoring, uh, there's going to be a third video where I talk about refilling the gaps that were left um, when I um, threw away so many clothes. Um, and some of the stuff that's in the maybe pile will make an appearance there. And then hopefully I'm going to round this out with a final video where I talk about the work capsule that I ended up with, which was which was sort of the goal of this rationalise and refactor uh, situation. Um, yeah, I honestly can't give you any spoilers about how that turns out because I am still hip deep in the, this blooming process. So I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where it goes. Anyway, I hope to catch you next time and until then, have a smashing day.